Salam alaikum, we Muslims are sick and tired of being labeled as terrorists, and that we support child molestation, we are a fake religion, especially here in America, even American Muslims are being thrown out of their own family homes. We have over billions of Christians talking very dirty about our religion, since these channels are so popular on YouTube, Christian Prince which he has permitted to all Christians, to use his content and upload into their channel, so basically he had opened a franchise, allowing Christians to upload stories about us Muslims, each channel that these Christians are uploading his video, are making money from his channel, because of the donations on each of his videos, this is one of the biggest promotions in the world, but most people don't know about this because they don't involve themselves in religious politics, but the day that you become Muslim, this is where the nightmare begins, not as a Muslim, because Islam is the most beautiful as religion said by many, another channel that we want you to look at is David Wood, suppose that these two channel content creators talking about Islam became Christians, and this is what they're telling the Christians and their comments, the funny thing is they are really buying into this, they are in statement saying praise Jesus, glory God, as these people would call us piss drinkers, Christians say that paradise to us is a whole bunch of orgies, how can you be Christians, promote such a thing is our question. Using words like praise Jesus, glory God, if Jesus was alive today, would he be in comments supporting this is our question. It's so sad because our religion doesn't teach us to hate you. Please find us one channel that Muslims are talking very dirty like these two channels that we mentioned. Now we could be here all day saying all these channels, but we're just mentioning the most popular ones. Muslims can't even search for Islamic videos because these videos are overpopulating the internet. Let us take a glimpse on Christian Prince. Salam Alaikum. She texts me in... Patreon. Uh, she gave her phone number, her Facebook, Instagram, you name it. And I told her I'm not, I don't chat in private and whatever, you know. And then she keep emailing me, emailing me in Patreon, so I blocked her. And then she said, don't you think it's little mean that you blocked me in Patreon? Tomorrow I will be a Muslim then. <laughs> My name is Islamic Prince, and I made this all happen, as far as this YouTube channel. I did it because, I love this religion, it's a shame that it had to come to this, to the point where I have to block my blood family. It seems like my sister is disowning me, I've put a lot of money into making all this happen, I will not come into something so beautiful, then get attacked as soon as I jump into something so beautiful, Islamophobia exists more than you think, now the only thing I ask of you, support my channel, and I will be asking for donations, very minimal donations, because I don't know how I'm going to continue everything, I can even show you my bills, I don't even have a life no more, but that doesn't matter to me, us Muslim don't treasure this world, because you will leave everything behind even you, our skeleton, your body, now I am not looking forward to getting rich from subscribers or viewers, only enough to maintain this content, unfortunately, I lost my job because I got criticized for my family member, I know the backstory online but they won't admit it, we became separate, when I became Muslim, now I do have plans to make commercials, hopefully they could launch, 4 years ago, I had an act of God happen to me, it couldn't be explained by normal human being, so I started looking into religion, and started noticing these fake Christians, like Christian Prince, this disappointed me, so I figured out one day I will be a YouTuber and do something different, here I am 4 years later, and I knew nothing about, computers, or animation, or religion, etc, but I grew hatred these fake Christians, and I told myself I will blow their channel away, so if your Muslim support my channel, cause I really, do not like holy water being thrown in my face, while another Christian, smacking me with their bible even if you are against these door knockers let's speak in one voice but anyway this is not the video where i tell my life story i will be uploading a playlist about my whole life in front of the camera salam alaikum let's go in to see what david was talking about according to the quran jesus was a prophet of islam his followers were muslims and the gospel is the inspired preserved authoritative word of Allah. But when we go to our earliest records, we find Jesus claiming to be the divine son of God who would die on the cross for sins and rise from the dead. Jesus' followers proclaimed him as their risen Lord. The gospel that Christians have been reading for nearly 2,000 years tells us that anyone who claims to be a prophet but rejects Jesus' death, resurrection, and deity is a false prophet and an antichrist. So if the Quran is right about Jesus, why does all of the available evidence tell us that the Quran is wrong about Jesus? Well, our Muslim friends have... You, the next president of the United States, Mr. Joe Biden. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Hi, everyone, and, and uh, everyone at M-Gaze uh, for organizing this event. Look, uh, I want to thank M-Gaze and uh, the PAC for endorsing my campaign. I can't thank you 
enough for all you've done so far, and that's for, uh, for t thank you for taking the time for watching today. Look, one of the things I think is important, I wish, I wish we taught more in our schools about the Islamic faith. I wish we talked about all the great confessional faiths. It's one of the great confessional faiths. And what people don't realize is one of my avocation is theology, don't realize is that we, we all come from the same root here in terms of our fundamental basic beliefs. And uh, I just want to thank you for, uh, for giving me the opportunity, for being engaged, for committing uh, to action this November. You're doing what's been, uh, been that's, uh, that's never been done before. You're registering and turning out one million Muslim voters this November. It matters. Your voice, your voice is your vote. Your vote is your voice. Muslim Americans' voices matter to our communities, to our country, and but we, we all know that your voice hasn't always gotten recognized or represented and uh, or the recognition it deserves. And uh, and that's your right as a citizen. You know, you're, wh what you're doing is making a real difference. I mean that. Look, this weekend, we lost a I lost a friend, but we lost a champion for civil rights of all people, a tireless advocate for making sure every single person could access the power of their vote, the great Congressman John Lewis. You know, from the time he first marched with Dr. King until his last march last month with Black Lives Matter, he understood viscerally that the rights and freedoms of all people are connected. We're all connected. And no one is free while other people are oppressed. You know, it was no surprise that when Donald Trump announced the Muslim ban during his first week in office, John went directly to Hartsfield International Airport in his home district in Atlanta to demand answers of immigration officials. They wouldn't tell him how many people were being detained. You know what his answer was simply? Quote, why don't we just sit down and stay a while, end of quote. As always, John Lewis knew where to stand or to sit to be on the right side of history. And the best way to honor John's legacy is to continue his purpose, continue his commitment to making it easier for every American to cast their ballot and participate in our democracy. In memory of John, <coughs> Congress should make up legislation to, to, to excuse me, take, take up the legislation to restore the Voting Rights Act, the legislation he fought so courageously for. They should take it up immediately. And if they don't, I'll make sure it happens at the beginning of my administration. Look, Mr. Chairman, I don't have to tell any of you that this is the most important election in modern American history. Muslim communities were the first to feel Donald Trump's assault on black and brown communities in this country with his vile Muslim ban. That fight was the opening barrage in what has been nearly four years of constant pressure and insults and attacks against Muslim American communities, Latino communities, black communities, AAPI communities, Native Americans. You know, Donald Trump has fanned the flames of hate in this country across the board through his words, his policies, his appointments, his deeds, and he continues to fan those flames. Under this administration, we've seen unconscionable, an unconscionable rise in Islamic phobia, the incidents including kids being bullied in school and hate crimes in our communities. He's named people with a history of open Islamic phobia open, straightforward, who have no business serving in high positions in our government, to key leadership roles in our Department of Defense, the U.S. Agency for International Development. He's not only an insult to our values, it weakens our standing in the world. What message does this send to the rest of the world? We have led the world not just by the example of our power, but the power of our example. And he's making a mockery of what we stand for. We can do something about it, and I'm here today to ask you to join me in a fight to rip this poison from our government root and stem, or as the famous case said, root and branch, starting by making Donald Trump a one-term president this November. But I'm not just asking for your support because the alternative is unthinkable. I want to earn your vote, not just because he's not worthy of being president. I want to work in partnership with you make sure your voices are included in the decision-making process as we work to rebuild our nation. We can't just build back to where we, where we were before Donald Trump took office. We have to build back better. 
Right now, we're facing a trio of urgent crises in this nation. A public health crisis, as this pandemic is heading in the wrong direction. An economic crisis, with millions of Americans out of work and small businesses struggling to survive. And a racial justice crisis. A long overdue national reckoning about the way our country has treated blacks, browns, Native Americans, and I know Muslim Americans feel that too, especially black Muslims. You know, these come on top of a looming climate crisis, deep-seated economic inequities that have too long divided this country, rewarding those at the very top while working class folks have to work harder and harder just to stay where they are. You know, there's not a single one of these issues where Muslim Americans don't have a critical stake in our ability to deliver solutions and real results. There's not one of these issues where Muslim Americans aren't essential to our success. From Muslim medical professionals to frontline workers, we're fighting around the clock to beat back this virus, risking their own health in the process. For the Muslim small business owners who are the pillars of their community, but have worried about how to keep their doors open. The Muslim CEOs are keeping people on the job and keeping our country running, like Pioneer Service outside of Chicago, which retooled during COVID-19 from making auto parts to manufacturing ventilators. And to the Muslims who have suffered abuse and discrimination or worse because of their faith, the color of their skin, and those working to advance social justice every single day all those Muslims who have served in the United States military, who have committed to do so and continue to do so today. I'll be a president who recognizes and honors your contributions. And these contributions go back, by the way, to our founding. I'll be a president who seeks out, listens to, and incorporates the ideas and concerns of Muslim Americans on everyday issues that matter most to our communities. That will include having Muslim American voices as part of my administration. If I have the honor of being president, I will end the Muslim ban on day one. Day one. And I'll work with Congress to pass hate crimes legislation, like the Jabbar Hire No Hate Act, and end racial and religious profile and the and the end racial and religious profiling act. I'll be focused on issues that matter to all Americans: getting the virus under control, addressing health disparities working to expand access to health care by protecting and building on Obamacare with a public option. And I promise you I'll make historic investments to revitalize our economy by strengthening American manufacturing and the supply chains and by making sure American workers have an opportunity to join a union and earn a real living wage. I like to make sure that all our children are prepared and equipped to succeed in the 21st century. An economy by making, economy has to change and get better. By making critical investments in our teachers and our schools. We're gonna triple the funding for schools in low-income areas. We're not gonna leave schools and child centers on their own to figure out how to keep educators and students safe during a pandemic. And we're gonna restore American leadership around the world, starting by putting our democratic values and our diplomacy at the center of our foreign policy again. You know, I won't be writing any love letters to dictators. And I won't fail to speak out against the abuses of human rights, including targeting for violence, the prosecution of Muslim minorities around the world. I have, and I'll continue to speak out for the Uyghurs and Rohingya. I'll work to close those god-awful policies. I'll work to close in close cooperation with our partners to meet the moral demands of a humanitarian crisis in Syria, Yemen, and Gaza. I'll continue to champion the rights of Palestinians and Israelis to have a state of their own, as I have for decades, each of them a state of their own. But we're not going to be able to do any of this if we don't win in November. That's why this event and your involvement is so critical. We can't afford anyone to stay in the sidelines and sit this election out. We need you. I need you. Millions of dollars, and you'll get to see I, it. I, and you'll get to when? see it. But and let me Shalom? just tell you, Chris, let me just say something that.